So one of the other light worker do it lists includes this exercise that I'm, always cracks me up when you have a, a mentory or a student or someone who's really, really, really self-absorbed. Self-absorbed. Yeah. Okay. I guess that's a word yeah. some people might resemble. <laughs> a week they can't use the word I, me, or myself, me, myself mine, mine, about uh, anything. anything in any of their conversation, any of their words. No. So not just with we're like conversations with us, but like, with their family, their coworkers, all the things. They cannot use the, those words they for a week, for a words. month, six months. Depending on the severity of their condition of a self-absorption, <laughs> how long they have to do this for. Right. And so and naturally. So they come out with, like, the first few communications is hilarious to it every time. Every, every time. time. Oh my gosh. Or squirrel squirreling. Squirrels. Come here. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to Woo for Thought. This is our other podcast. One of our other mm -hmm. podcasts, even though, you know, it's still us. It's still us. Yeah, but this time we're talking about an essay. Yes. An essay is our starting point. Mm -hmm. Normally it's um, driving to the res and we talk about our newsletter. Mm-hmm. And you can find, if you like to read, That's these are my long form essays. And you can find them at inelia.substack.com and the Woo for Thought. Right. On the top, you'll see it says yeah, Woo for, Woo thought. for thought. There's uh, several long essays there. They go really into the meat and potatoes of different topics. And uh, since this, this particular Woo is pretty um, important, I think. I thought it would be good to, hey guys, hey, I agree, I agree, let's do it. I thought it would be good to actually just read the end of it as a starting point, and then I have a bunch of questions I want to talk about. That's great. Okay, so uh, why don't you give it a start? All right, okay, if we can control the PV and the doggies and the chickens and the squirrels, give me a PV. Yeah, <laughs> you can let the squirrel go. Yeah, we have a uh, buzzard or something. Yeah, there's like a, uh, a, vulture, a vulture swimming around. Yeah. Chickens, Chickens are clucking. The dogs are barking. The chipmunks are squeaking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So this essay to me feels very important. And that's why I'm writing about it again. Because yes. it's not the first time I've written about this stuff. You've talked about this quite a few times. This, mm -hmm. this, this particular essay is... Let's talk about you. Let's talk about us. Yes. Okay. So we're going to read the bottom part of the essay, and then we're going to go into the questions around it, what it means, what it all means. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I writing about it again? Our world is splitting into those who want to stay in a power over others' reality and those who don't. And we don't. No, we, we don't. We don't. We don't. We, we've had enough of it. We've had enough of power over others. Yep. In order for us to co-create a reality where power over others cannot exist, we have to take back power over ourselves first. <sighs> that makes sense. One of our biggest disabilitating programs is the egoic obsession taught to us from birth, the program that separates us from our environment, our family, our community, and our world. The illusion of separation. I've heard that said plenty of times. <laughs> it's insidious because we're not actually separate from those fields of awareness. We are, by all purposes, still our environment, our family, our community, and our world. Only we don't know it. And we are not consciously feeding them with our energies of experiences that we prefer to see on Earth. Instead, we are activated and triggered in energies that fill the frequency things so that they persist. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's we right. chose that level of amnesia. We chose to co create a power over others' environment. It cannot happen unless, at some level of awareness, we have decided to forget who and what we are and allow the external programs of separation to define us. Many light beings came in not even knowing what power over others was. And as we fell into the amnesia, it needed to become powerless. 
we were open to being programmed into it. Now, because you're still reading this, or in your case, you're listening to this, <laughs> it is time for you to deprogram your powerlessness and return yourself into an expanded and high frequency state of existence. It is time for you to be your true self. For that to happen, the illusion of separation has to dissolve. Again, this does not mean stop being yourself or stop being a singular person. It means that that singular person can also be his or her environment, family, community, and world when they choose to. Back and forth as the situation, as the situation calls for. Being seen. I started this essay talking about the experience ahead of others when I could not turn their thoughts down. It was all about them wanting to see, be seen by me, wanting something from me, demanding something from me. What I've noticed is that most people want to be seen, admired, loved and touched. Because everyone else wants that in their experience, the dynamic can quickly turn into what can I get from this person's situation or conversation. When I meet a person, I become interested in their details, the way they hold themselves, any art such as makeup or hair, facial hair, colour of their skin and hair, shape of their bodies and faces, hands and feet. I'm also interested in their frequency, level of awareness, expressed thoughts, etc. But I can take it all in within a few seconds. Their thoughts might take a bit longer. Why am I interested in people? The reason is that each person is unique in the universe. There are not two people who are the same. And as one looks at a person, one can see millions of incarnations, orchestrations and decisions that make them who and what they are in that moment. It is also true that a flower, a bee, a hummingbird, a cat, a window, a sunset, an ant colony, a whisper in the wind, the boiling kettle's promise of a nice cup of tea, or even the smell of bacon is also interesting to me as much as any person. You can imagine then how fascinating it was to me <laughs> to see that most people are really not interested in other people at all, except in what they can get from that other person. The thoughts go a bit like this. Let me guess. Why is that person looking at me like that? Are they angry at me? <laughs> Other person is busy pulling something out of their teeth with their tongue. I want that person to give me a job. Other person is wondering if they can let if they let the cat out that morning. <laughs> I wonder if he likes me. Other person is wondering about the engine in the car behind the, her. Him or her. Yeah, her. <laughs> her. Okay. I want him to be my boyfriend, my friend, sorry, I'll start that one again. <laughs> I want him to be my friend because I don't have any friends in this new city. The other person is wondering what to have for lunch and if the girl he fancies is at the cafe that day. <laughs> you probably get the idea. That reminds me of that meme, you know, the guy in the gal in bed and he's leaning one way and she's the other. He's like, I wonder what she's thinking or I wonder what he's thinking. And then or she's probably thinking about this. It's like all of these things that that meme says and the other person is completely thinking about totally something different yeah, yeah about like breakfast that. the next day or breakfast something. in the morning yeah so why am i interested in you becoming interested in the us instead of you because a high frequency planet cannot be created with self-absorbed individuals most people have never been seen heard felt or touched not really most people have never been acknowledged and allowed to express the entirety of self in another person's presence. And if they did express it, that expression was never seen as the other person were too busy trying to be seen themselves to see anyone else. As you do the exercise of us, we and ourselves for the next few hours, days, months or weeks, also spend some time with another person and connect with them. See how beautiful they are, how unique. How many billions of years and choices created what you see in front of you, in their face, their thoughts, their words, their voice, their clothes, their actions and responses. Five minutes doing this for every person you know can change their lives forever. It's quite extraordinary. But of course, if you do it while thinking about yourself, or if the person will return the favour, notice or even ask about you, then you're not doing it right. <laughs> In the Sex, Loves and Soulmates course, there is an exercise where we sit at a cafe where it's somewhere public and look at people. The exercise is designed to illustrate our egoic obsessions. And mostly it goes like this. You see a woman walking past and may think she's too elegant. And we ask, too elegant for what? 
And this illustrates our agendas, the agenda of the self-absorbed ego. Maybe too elegant to be my friend or lover. The thoughts might even run to too conceited, too arrogant. Who does she think she is anyways? <laughs> totally. <laughs> I'm not worthy of her friendship or love. <laughs> it's so true, huh? <laughs> that was the greatest exercise ever. All of those are based on the damaged ego. How would the exercise be reprogrammed by us? First, we become aware of it. The cafe exercise is designed to illuminate the self agendas. Just become aware, uh, becoming aware of those agendas can shift us out of our self absorption. Are you ready to do some of those exercises and learn to become greater than the disconnected self? Shall we do this? Let's do this. Yes, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Yeah. I thought it was important to start at the end because. The end is so full of these gems, right? Mm -hmm. Those were like gems, man. <laughs> gems, man. So there were, uh, we kind of dissolve some illusions, yes. right? And some of those illusions are pretty pervasive, I think. So um, there are two extremes, and you mentioned that in the in the essay. Mm -hmm. The um, way to fix all this is to get rid of the I, me, myself. No, to just. That's an extreme. Get rid of. Oh, the extreme. Yes, yes. And yes, the other sorry. extreme is um, to get rid of the everyone but me. Right. Which is to push you into the I, me, myself. Yeah. And those extremes are like, uh, they're like uh, illustrated, like, like um, service to others. Yes. Okay. And their service to self. Mm -hmm. then that's the bad one right yeah that's the i me myself one right yes so to get rid of the i me myself you only serve others which is also i me and myself which is <laughs> in some ways yeah right because it's but like you were talking others. about the thought yeah. the thing is like why are you doing this oh for me my, for my, my, evolution. my evolution requires that i serve others yeah so it's still i me myself right yes yeah but why is that um so so what's the attractive. solution? Well, you have to do we us ourselves. Right. We, we include ourselves. ourselves in the other. Right. Right? We, yeah. We us ourselves. But why are they so attractive, right? I think right. Well, I, I, I was mean, looking at there, that, you know, the attractiveness of the low paradigm things, including this illusion of separation. And it's okay. almost like an addiction. And it has some weird chemical, like things that happen to the physical body. Yeah, because like I was talking, whenever you talk that to people are addicted to, right? Like this obsession. Well, it's also a learned one, but it's also a programmed one. It's also a music one. It's also a here's the examples one. So I was talking to my daughter the other day, and she's uh, interested in this X Y Z path. Right? Mm -hmm. Go to the school, get a master's degree. We call it a graduate degree when you know mm -hmm. more hooty pooty. Well, a and, graduate degree can be a PhD also, so it's not necessarily just a master's. Right, I know that's. I think why, like when you're in the in the um, in that Economic, path, you call it a graduate I mean, uh, degree. You don't, you don't you don't call it what I would call academic it. path. Yeah. Yeah, when you're in that path, then you have different words for it, which. Right. You know, part of that it's part of that path. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's like <It's> part. <laughs> those of us who don't know any of that stuff, we're like graduate degree. What does that mean? <laughs> but if you know it, then you're like, oh, it's like lit 207. I was like, OK, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Got it. So uh, what I was meaning with this, how this is related is that. And this is something that you brought up when we had talked, talked with her before and uh, chairmen of our tribe, it's like why why what is the motivation right mm -hmm. what is the motivation and usually the answer is something along the lines of so i can get a good job mm -hmm. okay there's nothing wrong with a good job i suppose but why why do you what well, first of all you know it's like you start inquiring what makes a good job good job good. well it yeah. pays a lot right <laughs> it pays a lot yeah. or it's um it's a job in something that i'm Interesting. I'm passionate. I me myself am interested in I'm or passionate, passionate about. about. Yeah. That's or like the educational system. Find something you're passionate about. Right. So it almost like uh, solidifies empowers ex 
it it magnifies the I me myself. Yes. Like the whole reason you're doing this is an I me myself reason, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that uh, is the what do they call that? Something about consumerism, control of the masses, external stimulations, so approval of self. That's what supports that I me myself and makes it stronger. Mm -hmm. Not to say that you can't have a job. Or even a good job that you like. That, pay, that you pays you a lot of money, that you feel passionate about, and um, you're very interested with, right? It doesn't mm -hmm. mean that. But no. if you just base it on those things, you're going to fail. Yes, yeah, right? like, why all of those things? Why do you want to do all of that You stuff? have to add another bit to it yeah, for it to make you happy. And we and ourselves right. needs to be added to it, right? right? So in the direct example, like, how does this support your tribe? What it is that your particular job or passion or interest is going to be, or mm -hmm. your family or your community, yeah. or the place family, or the space that you're going to live. Yeah. Right. So it's not just singularly about I will be happy if I have mm -hmm. a good job that pays a lot and am. Um, you know. Yeah, so one of the examples that I've seen that can go a little bit sideways is people, I know a couple of people who become um, doctors in hospitals, like right. medical doctors. And they came in with the, you might think, the right dynamic. They wanted to make a lot of money. They wanted something interesting. They are interested in medicine and healing people. Something challenging too. And challenging. And then also... To help community because you know you're a doctor you're helping people right mm -hmm. and what i saw was that um, they became disillusioned because they they got the money they got the like the authority and the the name prestige. for themselves this prestige and then they they it wasn't satisfying because a lot of people were dying there was a lot of nasty stuff happening and their hours were just insane Atrocious. um yeah so it can go sideways quite easily and so even though they were thinking they were doing something for the community it turned out yeah. it wasn't for the community yeah it didn't benefit the community that's just an example um so you have to be really diligent about service to self, service to others, service to us, you know, um, because it has to match all of the things. And when you figure out, hey, actually, this doesn't actually match, then you can remove yourself from that. Right. It's kind of like we in this in this last example, we kind of mixed up in mixed up um, motivations with um, service that included an us in it, right? Mm -hmm. But um, something like a hijacked practice, right? Yeah. So like, I'll be the best mafia member to help my neighborhood, <laughs> right? So, I mean... You might bring yourself yeah, level of It might help your neighborhood, and, level of satisfaction. Yeah, You'll have the yeah. best uh, restaurant in the uh -huh. corner and nobody will bother you guys on the... Yeah. Well, except for when they do might be extreme yeah. bother but do you see what i mean that's mm -hmm. a bit of a hijacked business to be really good at so yes. i think when we talked about this before i think it was in a call it's like uh you do need to be selective with the profession uh -huh. that you're going to be right. in even right. if it's about a us we reason yes. right yeah. it's like our family's drug 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 dealing business you know <laughs> to be best or whatever yeah, so that's it's like, that's I mean, not I mean, it's that's very not personal doing, right? right it's very right. personal because i remember uh, there was this uh, vet that I used to take my animals to in Ireland where I lived in Swords. And this vet had done that journey of like wanting to get like a medical degree. He became a veterani veterinarian. Veterinarian. <laughs> veteran. Oh, a veteran that. of Aryans. Yes. <laughs> so, um, and then he established his own practice in this town and I remember it was a really beautiful, beautiful, beautiful practice. I mean, it was gorgeous, right? And you could tell that the pets would go in there. Of course, they would struggle, but the way that he had his uh, 
like places in the back to keep the pets overnight and stuff. It was beautiful, really nice. And he seemed very happy, you know. And then, I don't know, we got into talking and everything, and he said that he had originally thought, um, you know, I thought, oh, yeah, this must be paying really good, right? Yeah. So he pays the bills, you know. And it's like, he said, he the conversation came about that he had worked for a large veterinary hospital in the capital. And that it didn't satisfy, right? So then he decided to go home to his village mm -hmm. and set up this other practice, even though there was a lot less pets in there, right? So less customers and less everything. Um, and now he was he had to change it slightly because he was, there was a lot of farms, so now he had to do the big animals. The big animals, yeah. Yeah. So it, it had a, a level of that, but what I understand from, or I understood from what the stories that he would tell was that he went from an understanding of what it meant to do a job for us. He was very close in the community. He'd grown up there and people knew and trusted him. He was such a nice guy too. He was a really nice doctor, right? Uh, a nice vet. He made you feel good when you came in with your pets. Right. And the whole building was set up for the pet's comfort and the owner's comfort. And it was like different. So he became, he got to an understanding of just healing pets, which was what he was doing in the hospital, to working for the community. Healing, healing the pets of the community yeah. that he was a part of. He yeah. was inclusive in it. Right. Because right. he was part of that community. So he was benefiting his people and himself. Right. More satisfying. He was. Yeah. He was yeah. very, very happy. Very happy. And yeah, he had to change his path a little bit and get more training, which obviously costs a lot. <laughs> right. To, to include the big to animal. To the big animal, yeah. yeah. The cows and the pigs and the horses. Yeah. The goats and the sheep. <laughs> so all of this talk about jobs it, it sort of reminds me about the class we just reviewed in uh, Walk With Me Now our uh, subscription platform mm -hmm. class uh, 95 nine, your 9 to 5 job and your life mission is that what it's called? yeah and it's the class in focus class at the moment focus. on our website too you can get it from unitybenz.com Right, and we have it on our uh, Driving to the Res uh, subscribe star also. <laughs> That's pretty interesting. Yeah, there's a lot in that class. So if you want to look into more about uh, jobs, I'd, I'd highly suggest that. So I took some notes. Um, one of the notes was, service to others is a state of enslavement as strong as service to self. What did you think about that? What I was a bit shocked because, you know, as I first uh, learned about service to others, service to self, service to self seemed like, oh, that's obviously bad. Mm -hmm. And service to others is like, well, that's good. How did that go for you in your life? Well, when I when I look at those who are professing to be in service to others, mm -hmm. just like, at the extremes, as they become more and more service to others, they seem to be like develop into some kind of martyr. Their whole entire existence starts to fail. Mm. Like I've um, seen that too. Yeah, I've seen like that. Uh, they don't have enough food or money to eat or get gas, or the cars are torn into garbage. They can't get around. <laughs> their housing, they don't uh, have a house, or they're on. Yeah, they're I like remember there was this lady. Couch who was became quite like renowned for existing without any money at all and right. complete service to others and i'm like i was questioning well how do you eat and where do you sleep just on oh, other people's couches and they they buy the food for me so, so you're not living like for free you're just not using your money you're using other people's money and you're using other people's money <laughs> right 
Right. But, you know, there there's a pretty strong teachings around moving out of service to self and into service to others as a path towards higher frequency. Yeah, there's a lot of that programming going on, but it doesn't actually help and it doesn't raise your frequency. It just lowers your frequency in a different way. I mean, how does yeah. service to self not raise your frequency? It doesn't. Well, how doesn't service to self do it? What, 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 when you're in service to yourself is like concerned about your well-being. You have food, you have water, your car's mm -hmm. working and your focus and your attention is all on you it's know, more providing extreme, your I things. Think, yeah, I think it's more extreme than that. I think it's like only to self. So you're not going to share it with anyone. You're not going to have a family. Right. And if you do, that family said to serve you. Right. right. So service to serve is quite extreme. Like everybody and everything and the entire world is there to serve you. Right. As, a, as we look at the service to self or service to others, it's usually the extremes where the yes. where you notice it mostly. It's like right. a life completely devoted to serving yourself. Eventually, it's like pretty shallow and unsatisfying. Right. Yes. And the same thing on the service to others. At a point, it becomes obvious that. <laughs> what was that bubble? I don't know. <laughs> we just got a, a thumbs up from a thumbs up from random OBS. <laughs> <laughs> we'll call it service to self and service to others. Right. Okay. okay then. That was random. It was very random. We haven't done anything. I haven't touched anything. Okay, but 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 some people say, well, in moderation, you know, service to self with some service to others. And less self and more about others. How about that? No, that doesn't do it. You see, it's like when you separate yourself from others, that's the problem. Service to self, you separate yourself from others. And service to others, you separate yourself from others. That's the problem. It's the illusion of separation there that's making it all wonky. And it's uh, essentially the, the misunderstandings of light workers being taken advantage of in some some way i would say so yeah yeah i would say I what about yes. other countries you know like you see the like the indian guru boys or gals that are like all to get dedicated to it's all about service to others even though they have giant ashrams with whatever and they they're feeding everybody with i don't know where they're getting the money for the food but obviously it's coming from somewhere right mm -hmm. but all the money that they're receiving they're turning into food for everybody else in mm -hmm. some way or something mm -hmm. and they're doing all this work to clear the karma of everybody and of course expedite it make their karma go faster so that means they got to suffer more well, i get very very confused about some of these things because you know, it's like, like all of know. them are entwined into weird mm -hmm. weird I think you made a lot of generalities there, right? And there's a lot of things that you put together that are not necessarily something that all of those gurus follow, right? Yeah, I think there was a lot all. there. Exactly. There was probably a lot there, but I mean... Yeah, there was a lot there. <laughs> the cat's moving our camera now. <laughs> okay, go, Brad. So, yeah, there's the mushrooms that feed everybody, and that's kind of cool. And they'll feed themselves also, and that's their life mission. There's some other ones that don't. There's some other ones that beat people up so that they expedite. Expedite the clearing their karma. of their karma. Uh, so there's all the things. All of the you things, know, I guess. Like, so but the thing is, is that some of, these times, for one. some of these times I use these terms as bait in a sense. It's like, I don't know. It's all about separation. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about separation. So to uh, navigate that, separation thing mm -hmm. i did see something that was kind of you interesting okay um be sand pebbles water sounds air other people there your dog your body your thoughts your smile at the same time yes more than a you but not only just also a we right so you don't like delete yourself to become the sun, to become the leaves of the trees, to become the ocean or the lake or the sand. You don't delete the self. You are also all those other things. There's no separation. There's no division. But also if you think about it, and I've done this a few times when I think about the I, me and myself, 
right? So you need a healthy identity of singularity. And I think to myself, I'm, I'm also the other people on Earth. And I do get some resistance because a lot of people on Earth are choosing power over others' paradigm. And how does that make me part of like being them and them being me? So there's a lot of things then it's kind of incompatible and that's why we're having a split. And that's we're it. having a split because we cannot go to the place where they are me and I am them if they are wanting a power over others paradigm because you can't have a power over others paradigm when you don't have other. Right. Well, I don't know why. Because the word other is in there, power over others. Oh, if now if there's no others, there's no power over. Right, others. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> when you say it that way, I mean clearly <laughs> you can't have you power over others if there's no other. Exactly, it's very simple. What I teach is actually really, really simple, right? And what I look at <laughs> these thoughts okay. and I expand on these thoughts is actually really simple. It's not complicated. We 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 probably better write. You can have power over others without other. Right. Somewhere. <laughs> Somewhere. Somewhere. Don't forget it. <laughs> so you get you get the simplicity of that part. I mean, that is ultra simple, and it's kind of profound when you say it that way, <laughs> even though it's ridiculously silly. Simple. With no other, there is no power over. Right. So other. light workers. There's no power over other. Yeah, light workers do it. List involves moving out of other. Mm -hmm. Right. So. Yeah. You evolve your I me to include your fellows and your environment. Yes. So we become us. Become us. Yes. Our... So if you think about this environment that we're in right now. Yeah, we've if got a think cat, about... the dog, the chickens, chickens the, the trees, trees, the, the house. house. Hey, we were like right that. On. Did you like that? Yeah. Did you yeah. see that? Yeah. Did you see Did that? You see that? <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> it's that simple. Okay. But it, I mean, it broke down after a few seconds because you became Aware excited of it of, and yeah, excited about it. Excited yeah, yeah, yeah. at a self level. What is this happening in the room? We call it moving in and out. Yeah. And that's yeah. the healthy aspect. We go in and out of the larger self and into the singular and then the larger, depending on the situation that we're at, what yeah. we're doing at the time. So one of the other light worker do it lists includes this exercise that um, always cracks me up when you have a, a mentory or a student or someone who's really, really, really self-absorbed, self-absorbed. Yeah. Okay. I guess that's a word yeah. some people might resemble is <laughs> a week. They can't use the word. I, me or myself, me, myself, mine, mine about. Uh, anything, anything in any of their conversation, any of their words. No. So not just with we're like conversations with us, but with like, their family, their co-workers, all the things. They cannot use the, those words they for a week, with for a month, words. six months, depending on the severity of their condition <laughs> of <a> self-absorption, <laughs> how long they have to do this for. Right. And so, and so what they come out with, like the first few communications, it's hilarious to what every time, every, every time. time. Yeah. So this this person who is known as Larry. Yes. <laughs> wants some ice cream. <laughs> I didn't say I. Exactly. Or one wants some ice cream. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we want some ice cream. Who's we? I've heard that. Yeah, I heard that too. Who's we? We, we want some ice cream. <laughs> this is the royal we. Right. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, I noticed that too. They just substitute a different word for I and think that that's uh, mm -hmm. fixing it. Mm -hmm. Because they literally can't think past I. They can't. Right. And so then the next part, next part I've noticed that happens often is they just don't say anything. Yeah, they go really quiet. They just can't talk anymore. They can't. They really quite literally can't. Yes. Because everything they think and everything they've said for how many years Contain the words I, me, and myself in it. It's eye-centric. Yes, eye-centric. I like that, eye-centric. Yes. And that's unhealthy. That extreme is unhealthy. So that's the one exercise to put you on the other extreme. So that eventually you come to the middle part, right? The middle path. Right. You don't want to exclude I entirely. No. But uh, no. Not, not just exclude long. everything else either. Right. 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 So uh, those are some good 
light worker like exercises the the third exercise is yeah. the the be be your environment more than just <laughs> you but not only but also i remember one of the exercises i also had um somebody do was to have conversations they had to have at least one conversation a day mm -hmm. with another person where they did not speak about themselves or just think about what they were going to answer that was interesting to them or about them as they were talking to this other person <laughs> and they had to i remember they came in they lasted one day actually they, they <laughs> did not the succeed day. did not quite succeed they did not quite succeed and they came back to me and Oh my god, a cat! Within 24 hours, and they said, I can't do it because they're just too boring. Everyone else is just boring. They're just so boring, I cannot stand it. I really just don't want to know about their stuff. I cannot do it. I cannot <laughs> do it. And I said, okay, so here's the thing where you, you can do. Okay. You still don't talk about yourself. But when they're talking, you have to grab onto something that actually interests you and talk about that but you don't like you know so like say, say something like you're conversing with me tell me about yourself well how's your day well i was just thinking about my sweatshirt colors the choices in sweatshirt colors and how they how they look mm -hmm. but i'm not going to say on me even though that's what i'm thinking no 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 you're the other person that i'm supposed to be having doing this exercise with oh what do you think about my shirt color choices I think that red on your shirt looks really nice and bright. Oh, I really like in the blue, the contrasts here with the black and the blue and the red. They look really nice. I like those. So it's okay if you like them in the conversation? Isn't this supposed to be you're not supposed to say I? No, no. This is about talking to the other person. This is a different exercise. Oh, so I'm not talking about myself, one. right? You kind of were because you asked that me. you like that because you asked that right what do you think about my shirt colors okay. so you ask so then i respond to your question okay so you're thinking about me instead of yourself it's like right. instead of saying what do, what do you think about my shirt color you're actually what do i i got lost yeah so you you asked me about your shirt colors and how they look on you because you told me to right <laughs> So, <laughs> if I was going to answer in an I mind myself version, right. I would go, you know, I don't think that would fit me. I think oh, it's too I big see. for me. Um, yeah. It might look good on you, but not on me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Like, but again, I don't think my sweater would look nice on you because it would probably be too small. Because <laughs> okay. my sweater is my size. What that, what that, what that leads me to is the. No, do it again, do it again. Um, it's a nice exercise. I like this. So how's your day today? Well, well, oh, how's my day today? Yeah. It's pretty busy. Yeah. You know, even though I have this little tug to get to Fossil Beach, I also have this tug to uh, take care of my podcast work. I have this tug to take care of other work. I've got a lot of tugs today. Oh, yeah? Yeah, but I'm, I'm also hungry. Yeah? Are you yeah. hungry? Yeah, I'm hungry too. Yeah. What would you like to eat? Some of the chicken curry you made last night. That sounds good. Yeah, that sounds really good. I like that idea. Now do it again. Tell me if you're hungry. I'm hungry. Me too. Oh. I want to eat some chicken. <laughs> Actually, no, I think I fancy some pasta. <laughs> yeah, I think pasta. Some... Can you make me some pasta, honey? Okay. <laughs> See how that's very different. Yeah, that's a bit different. <laughs> That reminded me of a conversation or of another part of the article mm -hmm. uh, or the essay. And that was what people wondering what other people are thinking about them. <laughs> you know, nothing. <laughs> so I can answer right now. People very don't rarely. think about you at all. Even if they think they're pretty, they're thinking about what pretty means to them. Like, you know, so you were, you were sharing when you're a teenager, you would catch the, thoughts of everyone right yeah. and it was turned up pretty high high volume so it was like yeah. impossible to ignore mm -hmm. and you would hear somebody think i wonder what they think about me mm -hmm. and then you would hear the other person's what they're thinking about and that just cracked me up yeah it's like we do spend a inordinate not i'm gonna say we all of everyone but 
the majority of the people I hang around with some degree or other are really concerned with what other people think about them. Right. Yeah. And uh, is it freeing to know that they're not thinking about you? Or is it... It's just data. I don't data? know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, how do you feel about it? If I said to you, every time we've been like in a hall full of people or in a party or in a supermarket or wherever you might be driving your car, nobody is thinking about you. Well, I know it can't be true. They're just wondering. They have to be thinking about me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but if they're not, then I need to do something to make that happen. <laughs> and what would you do to make that happen, honey? I guess I would do things like uh, not brush my hair so it's sticking out. Uh -huh. I might brush, go get a haircut. Uh -huh. So that it isn't sticking out. Okay. So I could do like two extremes. It could either look really good or look really odd. And and then somebody says, I like your haircut, Larry. Then what does that mean to you? They're thinking about you? Yeah. Because they said, I like, I <laughs> like your hair. <laughs> yeah. I like to look at your hair, that <laughs> shape and that shape. I don't like it when the hair sticking out all over your it is, it disturbs me. It's the, all about the eye, isn't it? They think of themselves, <laughs> what they like, not what you like. <laughs> so even then they're not thinking about so what you, they, you what you could say if you were practicing uh, a little bit more we us, it's like, how do you like your new haircut? Maybe like that. I notice you have a haircut. I notice you have a haircut. How do you like it? How do you like it? Do you like how you look with that haircut? <laughs> Of course, now the person who's getting that is going to be thinking, oh my God, she probably doesn't like it. That's why she's saying that, huh? She's trying to be polite. <laughs> is that really what happens? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. It's still about me. Yes. yes. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yes. So, uh, you did say you did meet one person. In my life. We didn't have that. Yes. Experience. Amachi, who was on a trip to England. Yes. And just there to observe. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, you'd said at the time, you didn't know why they went to England just to observe. Did mm -hmm. you get any more data on that? Do you know why now? Uh, no, I never found out. I never asked. Did you ever think about it more? No. <laughs> well, that I just remember the data. Well, why, 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 um, what made that person extraordinary? So, like, first of all, what's a machi? Oh, that is one of the wisdom keepers and leaders of the Mapuche people in Chile. And that's, it can be men and women. That's your tribe? Yes. Okay. Well, it's kind of a whole bunch of tribes with the it's like umbrella the name for machi. <laughs> okay. And so a machi on a trip to England. Yes. How do you think they, how do you travel? He flew. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm, I'm just, I'm just curious at the rarity of that individual, right? Because how many people have you met now? It must have been millions. Yeah, and I've met a whole bunch of other machis that didn't have that skill. So it was so it. much that he's a machi. It's more like that individual. Yeah, probably. Yeah. If you tap back into him, in some sense of, uh, is he like a professionally incarnated like? PB has like been a dog really, really a lot of times. Now she's really good at being dog. Mm -hmm. Is he um, along that lines where it's like he's very good at the whole job of being a human being? Yeah. Do you think that's from many, many incarnations or do you think that's from uh, being diligent or what do you think? What can bring someone to that? I think it was an orchestration of wanting to be that. So as a... Uh, as a person, was he like noticeably more effective at being something? I mean, what's the, what's the, uh, what's what's in it for me if I, <laughs> if I do that? What's in it for Larry? Yeah, you if do I do that? that, do what? Whatever he was doing, just being and observing. Uh, yeah, but what? So you know, this that one person on the entire planet that you met, and of all the people you met, was in. Interesting in this regard. Yes. And that regard was as his thoughts weren't all obsessed with himself or he didn't yeah. even have any thoughts. 
He didn't have thoughts mostly. He was just in the the mode of experience, experiencing yeah. now. Yeah, and observing. And observing. Mm -hmm. Is that like Eckhart Tolle guy? Do you know he's like be here now with book? I don't know. I've never met him, so I can't really compare them. Can't compare them. No, I've never met the Tolle guy. So a guy that doesn't have any thoughts and is here just to experience, is there life? Or was he more? Was he effective at being something? Was it... as a person? Yeah. What's what's he that guy happy. like? He had cool clothes because he was wearing Native American clothes. So I thought that was cool. Um, he was just there. <laughs> we had a good giggle. <laughs> okay. Well, it doesn't uh, sound like it's like. He was, he was very happy and he enjoyed his trip. Well, that doesn't mean anything, right? Really? Why well, not? A whole bunch of people are happy to have enjoyed a trip to England. Well, we went to England and enjoyed the hell out of it, remember? Yeah, yeah, you did, yeah. But I had a lot of thoughts. Yeah, you had lots and lots of thoughts, yeah. So that doesn't really affect my trip to England and my mm. enjoyment of it. I'm just wondering what... Uh... What's in it for him? Yeah. <laughs> That's the whole point, isn't it? I don't know. <laughs> Explain. What's in it for him? Yeah. Having no thoughts. Yes. Nothing? Just the pure, sheer experience of experiencing? I guess. Yeah. Was it a uh, state of being that you would suggest other people aim for? Endeavor? It's up to the person. I mean, each person is their own authority of what they want to do. But if that feels very attractive to them, I would say yes. If that like goes, yeah, you know, that's amazing. I want that. Then go for it. Okay. okay. He was uh, not separate, or was that related to the separation in any way? Yeah, I would say that he wasn't separate from his environment and all the people that were talking to him. Said that way, that's that becomes slightly more interesting, mm. right? Like I said, it's like I noticed a gap of noise. <laughs> a silent space? Yeah, a, a spot of no noise. Oh. I thought, well, where is that? What's that? And then you that's went and got closer. That's why I went into the room and looked around and sp spotted this spot, and there he was. So um, you do have a exercise where you do nothing for some period of time. Oh, he wasn't not doing nothing. He was eating and talking or listening. Well, I'm sure. not saying he wasn't doing anything. I'm just saying you have an exercise, a do nothing, do nothing. exercise. Does yeah. that um, help bring you there? You think? I think most of my work brings you there. <laughs> I think most of my work is to get you to become aware of what you're doing moment to moment, conscious about it, and then making conscious decisions around it. And it also, some of the work does silence the mind, and some of the work does make you step out of the doing, right? Some of the work make, uh, allows you to step out of the I, me, and myself. And some of the work allows you to become larger than the self. And then some of the work allows you to be I mean myself in a healthy way. That's not self absorbed. So <clears throat> divisive. For him he would be that, like I mean myself without being self absorbed. Yeah. And not just I mean myself. Correct. Right. So one of the stories that you share was about the wedding pictures you were taking at a friend's wedding. Oh yeah. <laughs> And uh, a little something that you did to help the person move the person out, out of, of the I mean myself. their self-absorbed I mean myself yeah. into more of a state like that fellow was in. Yeah. So could you um, talk about that? What you so did? yeah, so the bride wanted me want to photograph the role of the ladies, her ladies. Yeah. And um, so I was busy taking photos of the ladies, and one of them put her hands up in front of her face and. Run away and it's like, no, 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 don't take a photo of me. I can't look terrible in the photos. <laughs> so, and it was all about her. And I said, well, you know, the bride wants a photo of all the ladies. She was like, I don't care. <laughs> I don't know if she said, I don't care, but it was that attitude. And um, I've seen that before because I've taken photographs most of my life and I've seen that it's just a program of the I, me, and myself. So all you need to do is just allow the person to come out of that I, me, and myself, a, like, block. Mm -hmm. And once they come out of it, it's fine. They become pretty, you know. So what did you do? What did you tell her? 
I said, look at your friend in front of you. There was one of her friends standing in front of her. Look at your mm -hmm. friend. Isn't she gorgeous? Just think about her and how beautiful she is. And as soon as she did that, boom, she Snapped relaxed and she became pretty. Yeah. You basically brought her to a we, yeah. us, ourselves. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. These are little, little things, but they're very powerfully impactful. Mm -hmm. We, us, ourselves includes I, me, they, them together. Mm -hmm. Is that about right? Yeah. You got it. I got it. Um, Martyr enters. Oh, yeah. We talked about this a little bit. The martyr. The self to service to other. Did you know that the word service is related to the word slave? I've heard you say that before, yeah. yeah. Isn't the etymology? Well, um, the service to others in the sense of martyr is mm -hmm. like you give to everyone at your own expense, right? Yes. And at the extreme, that becomes, you know, martyr, which is extreme savior. You're, mm -hmm. you're here. You have to save everyone. They're all victims. Right. And um, clearly seeing the world as full of victims is like... Like disempowering everybody. <laughs> disempowering everyone and empowering or giving power to the power over others. Yes. The others are powerless is the same as the others are powerful. Only mm -hmm. the opposite, right? All mm -hmm. of these things are the same thing. Yep. So we could talk about it for a long, long, long time, but it's still it's still in my head, I'm sure others, it's like if I go outside and somebody has a flat tire, here's where it'll go. I'm not going to help them because they're not a victim. They can fix their tire themselves. Really? Well, your mind goes there? Your mind can go there. Uh-huh. Okay. It's like, it would be better if they knew how to fix their own tire. Are you saving them or are you helping them? Nothing them. Letting them have their experience. Because they're them and they're not you? And you're not part of that equation? Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The separation from either one. I'm not going to do it for them. And I'm not going to save them. Um, do you see what I'm saying? It's like so, we talk ourselves into these loops mm -hmm. where we aren't going to make a bunch of victims by helping people. But that's not it either, is it? No. No. So explain it in a way that um, maybe people can get it. It's like it's okay to help people with a flat tire, right? Yeah. As long as you're not martyring yourself. As long as you're not martyring yourself. Martyring yourself, yeah. So it's raining, it's 30 degrees out, you don't have any gear to help, only you're wearing a t-shirt, you got the heater on high, and there's a big guy out there with a parka and a jack, and a jack thingy, zzz, zzz, doing this tire. Do you stop and go out there in the cold and martyr yourself to help? Because, I mean, he's got a flat, maybe cold flashlight or something. <laughs> Yeah, I'm making some pretty big, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. making it obvious, right? Yeah. It's like So in that you're... situation, let's just say that it's really cold. You don't have the gear. Maybe you've, your hands sore, whatever. And the person, you can see that there's a person by the side of the road. They have a flat tire and they're looking at the tools and things and their rain is falling on them, right? And they don't know what the hell they're doing. This person does not know what they're doing. They don't know how to change this tire. And it's wet and cold, and you can see they're soaking wet. Right. So how can you not save them and at the same time assist in right. a way that doesn't martyr yourself? Right. That's your question. Yes. Yeah. So you have to think about that. Think right? about it for a minute. Yeah. It's like, oh. No, that's very different to the person is inside their car staying nice and warm. Uh-huh. <laughs> you're out there in the freezing cold in your T-shirt changing the tire because so you know how can, to do it so, so they, they don't have to get warm. cold yeah they can stay warm mm. there's so a lot of that, gray gray yeah, areas there's, there's a lot of information there that you need to and at the end of the day you need to level it with yourself you cannot i mean these are all like pretend right but you need to measure it within yourself i don't have tools the person doesn't have tools um it's cold and wet out there they're standing in the cold and wet. You can stop the car and say, hey, do you want a lift? Yeah, can I give you a lift? Is yeah. anyone I can call? Anyone I can call? If you want call? some extra light, I can uh -huh. shine lights on, but I'm not ready to, I'm not, I'm not dressed for coming outside. Right. 
Exactly. I can maybe uh, put my blinkers on so nobody bothers you. Mm -hmm. and blah, blah. There's plenty There's of plenty of stuff you can do without martyring yourself and not leaving them high and dry on the side of the road. Right? Right. See? Yeah. See how easy that was? Yeah. Not complicated, actually. At all. Well, we tend to like to complicate it to make ourselves right. Yes. Right. Or you can martyr yourself and go out there and, you know. Save them? No, like try and do it all yourself so that you appear to be a good person. Oh, that will make them think that you're a good person. Because right. they'll stop thinking about themselves and think about what a great person that, by, exactly. that fella is. Mm -hmm. Such a nice person that man is. Well, they actually be inside thinking, gosh, I wonder what I'm going to have for dinner when I get home. This tire gets fixed. I wish he would hurry up. That's right. <laughs> it's going to take long. <laughs> and then, you know, one of the knots was rusted in. Yeah. And as you were turning him, you break it. Oh, and... you broke my car. Yeah, so you're going to sue you now. No, you're going to have to fix it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> these these hypotheticals can get pretty... Silly. You are almost like it's you're writing a, a, a novel. <laughs> yes. Okay. Hypotheticals can get very silly. So when we uh when we say service to self, service to others, we're neither one of those are like our So you our imagine go -to, that right? imagine neither the, one of those are our go to. Yeah, imagine the savior thing, right? Or the martyr, I should say. Uh, as you why do you stop Why do you stop to in to help in the first place? Well, clearly because if they're cold, I'm cold because we are a we. Right. Why do you stop in the first place? You don't want to be the guy who just drive past, do you? No, don't. Why? Because that seems like... Why? What's your big hurry? <laughs> like an easy job oh made hard, so a hard job perhaps. made easy. So if there's uh -huh. a couple or three of us and, uh, you know, this little... Thing that might be a giant impact together it's it's no big deal we got it and you uh -huh. maybe even meet somebody it's interesting and i guess um it could be that they've got everything under control and they don't need help it could be that they actually are stuck and they just need a little bit and you got orchestrated to be there and see it so are you going to respond to it in a high frequency way or are you going to spend the rest of your life wondering gosh i wonder if that person got their tire fixed or they got run over or so that's the point I wanted to get to. Okay, good. That well, I'm going to worry or think about I didn't do something good. And I'll feel guilty. And I will feel guilty. I will feel bad. I'll be thinking about I'll this think for about the rest of the evening. The rest of the night. It's ruined my whole I, night. It must ruin my night because I didn't figure out that that person was okay. Might even ruin my whole week if I read in a the paper they had an accident because of it. Yeah. Or they're stranded out there and. I had to go to the hospital for exposure, you know, it's like. <laughs> so it's about you in the end, isn't it? Most of the time when people help others is so that they feel So good. they don't feel bad about not helping. Right. So yeah. what's a healthy motivation? Um, no, I mean, you can do it in an honest way. I'm going to help this person because it makes me feel good and it'll mm -hmm. make me sleep better tonight. And that's okay because you're doing it consciously. Right, so that's it. That's the difference there. Like I said, it's, it's you don't have to be out of the eye me and myself all the time. But if you do it at a conscious level, then so don't you know, lie to yourself. You're don't doing lie to it. Yourself, yeah. You're you're stopping to pull over to help so that you don't feel bad later. So it's still about you, even though it's a, yes. On the surface, it's about someone else. Right. And so with the conscious awareness, becomes more authenticity. Actually, mm -hmm. you're authentic. It's like yeah. You know, I don't really want to get out of my cold, my warm car in this nasty weather and change a tire. <laughs> yes. But I will. <laughs> so I can feel So better. I don't feel bad about, you know, leaving you out there alone or mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. I, you know, with a little bit of stretching, a little bit of thinking, I think I can see how that would function. Mm -hmm. But of course. Because I've seen you, like. Sometimes I really like local. it. In the local area, and we see somebody in trouble, and I say, "Hey, we should we should stop." And you look at it and say, mm -mm, "No, not that not one. Gonna, not going to happen." No, nope, not and you that go, person. Right past, right. Mm -hmm. And uh, other times, it's like, Arr! Arr! and all the tools come out and everything, you know. And <laughs> yeah. it's not like because one is a woman or is a man or old or young. 
It could be, <laughs> I have no idea what makes you decide those things, but you know the people around here, right? Or situations or whatever, but it's been completely not like some the driven or anything. Some flat tires are traps. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. They set a trap with that flat tire. <laughs> We're not falling into that trap. <laughs> and some flat tires are, oh, hey, it's an orchestration to meet this person. Finally, there's a way that we can say hello to each other since we drive by each other and don't have a good excuse to stop. Uh -huh. So it's about you? No, it's about us. We. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Yeah. Like we have an excuse to... <laughs> I remember once it made you stop with this little old lady. Yeah. And then, and then she said, can you take me blow? And you said, nope, we're not going there. <laughs> and I'm like, what just happened? <laughs> <laughs> well, I knew what was happening. There was an orchestration happening. And she was supposed to catch a ride from the available man that was just around the corner walking her way. Do you remember? <laughs> yes. So, you were, yeah, you were like, what the hell's going on? No, you can't have a ride. We're not going that way. <laughs> <laughs> Even she was like, "What? Has you really? Oh, okay." <laughs> I don't want you to put the eye over your way. And you said, "That's right. Thank you. That's Bye." Right. See you later. <laughs> I mean, in some ways, that also made the next the guy coming around the corner look way better. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, I mean, I didn't at the time know that, but it came clear afterward, and it yes. was a strong no. I didn't have trying. a maybe yes. I no, didn't have a none. And that's not the usual no, response. No, that's not for normal me. for you. Yeah. It was very odd. <laughs> so the experience of you know expanding into that uh not just about I me mean, myself and not just about they them themselves, but we us ourselves. That word that we would use, we we can't use power or I can't use um, service to others or service to self. The word I saw you use before, which helped me have a word, was power of selves. What was it like? Power of self? Well, yeah, power of self. Yeah, you, can, you, self? you could say that, yeah. Because the power, you have the self power, right? You have your power. You don't take other people's. You don't push your power over others. And not others cannot push their power over you. But it's power very, of self has a bit of an I me to it's it. A, it yeah, know? so the self, you have to define yeah, self. The... How big is yourself, right? Is it just the I me and myself, or is it a larger self? Power, and power so it can become, self. yeah, it can become very difficult, very broad. But the power over thing is a very difficult conversation. Yeah, well, the service to self and service to others people have a very good marketing department. Those words go well. Yeah. We just need one for us. Power of us. Power of us. <laughs> yes. That's getting, getting there. Power of us. The people united <laughs> cannot be defeated. The people united cannot be defeated. Have you never heard that? No. I grew up with that, man. Yeah, well. <laughs> we didn't have none of that in a laugh. Power to the people! <laughs> <laughs> have you never heard that? Uh, no. I might have seen the sign somewhere. <laughs> it's a fist. I didn't like go fist. to very many marches, honestly. No, I didn't. It doesn't have nice nails, though. But... <laughs> no, I haven't. It's power to the people! Yeah. Well, but it's that's also I, our, our us versus them, which is another, you know, I, me, and myself, basically. Just the largest thing. I mean oh, myself because it's like power like us versus them has it uh, we are in ourselves but also them the others right the other has the other so it's just a larger I mean myself and it's still diff conflicting and it's still um it's still know, blah, blah, blah. It's what's blah, blah, blah. going on you got a thumbs up on that too whatever yeah. whatever yeah okay well thumbs up <laughs> So power, service to others, service to self, and we will not have service in this one. We could do service to us. Service to us yeah. and ourselves. Service to ourselves. Yeah. Ourselves includes us er and others. Us. Yeah, we're still going to need to work on that marketing, I think. <laughs> if you have any ideas... Throw them in the comments. Yes. We, we, could, we could use some help with this. Go to inelia.substack.com. Go to the Woofer Thought, Woofer this episode. Thought, and that's when you can scroll to the bottom. There's Come actually comments there. Yeah. 
you can put our your ideas or what we can call this thing. Right. Something that'll roll off the tongue. Easier, Easier than service to us. Than service to us. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sounds good. See us later. <laughs> <laughs> I know this episode had a lot of us in it, dogs and cats and chickens and wind and trees and plants Sun. and kids coming and and somebody thumbing up in the middle of it. I don't know how that happened. It's a mystery. If you know OBS, tell us how that happened. All by itself. All by itself. All right. Well, love you, honey. Love you too.